guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Brit, and if you've been subscribed yet, you probably should because I talk about geeky things. And today we're going to talk about TV because I haven't talked about TV in a while. I mean, I talk about TV all the time, but you know what I'm saying? Like television, like TV, like real, like real TV, what? Like just TV in general. So today we're going to talk about my top 10 favorite television shows. And I know what you're going to say when I finish this list. Where's the anime? Where's the Power Rangers? I look at Power Rangers as its own thing. I look at anime as its own thing. So these are all the television shows that are not those things. Uh, so let's just get started, shall we? Number 10 on my list is Three's Company. Uh, so Three's Company was a show in the 70s and into the 80s, probably considered inappropriate. It did not age well. You couldn't have this now. Um, and only just because housing laws. It's about two women who share an apartment. Their roommate just moved out because uh, she got married and had a baby all in one day. They need a new roommate and they happen to find a strange man sleeping in their in their bathtub and they invite him to live with them after he cooks them breakfast because he's studying to be a chef and he's just really good at what he does. So then the Ropers who are their landlords say, well, Mr. Roper, Mrs. Roper doesn't care. She's super sex positive and I love her. Um, Mr. Roper, however, is not cool with the idea of two women living with a man because all of the sex that's gonna happen between them because you cannot have platonic friendships with the opposite sex. So Jack ends up having to pretend he is gay throughout the course of the series because Janet, one of the roommates, happens to say that Jack is gay. So no sex is gonna happen between the three of them. And so yeah, like I said, it's probably inappropriate these days. Uh, in our culture these days, but it's just a great show and I love it for what it is. It's such a, it's just so funny. Super stereotypical. Um, Jack does very stereotypical things that a gay man would do. Um, like the stereotypical, like not what gay men actually do, but like, you know, being just very stereotypical, like almost offensively stereotypical. We'll just put it that way. But I, I still love it. John Ritter is an incredible actor or was an incredible actor. I miss him. <laughs> tremendously such a light that is not on this planet anymore. So Three's Company was actually a remake of a British show called Man About the House. Uh, same essential premise of the show. I know that our Three's Company moved in a completely different direction because Suzanne Somers at one point thought she was like, I don't know, God's gift to television and ended up getting herself fired from the show. But it's a great show. It also starred Priscilla Barnes, who is in another television show that is on this list. So let's just move on and get to Priscilla Barnes at some point in the future. But yeah, so let me know if you've seen Three's Company. I love it so much. It's such a good show. I own the whole thing. I haven't watched it in a while, but it's such a good show. <laughs> Number nine on my list is Psych. Um, so Psych is about a guy who has a really good memory, um, photographic even. He can remember the strangest of things. And his father kind of helps him. His father, who's a cop, or was a cop, I mean, because this is in the past, kind of helped him hone these powers, essentially. And he decides to use them for evil, but also good. Um, he pretends to be a psychic for the Santa Barbara Police Department. He's able to just remember certain things after breaking into crime scenes to be able to pretend like he is a psychic. And it was such a good show, so funny. I watched it from beginning to end. The only reason it's as low on my list as it is is because I feel like it did, to an extent, overstay its welcome. I kind of got bored towards the end of it, even though I thought it ended great, and I love the movie that came out, and I'm very excited for the next movie because Lasseter's gonna finally actually be in it again because I'm so glad that Timothy survived his stroke and is recovered now, so there you go. Anyway, but yeah, so Psych is such a great show. And my, my, mind you, my top 10, they're all like, I love them all pretty equally. So just because it's so far down my list does not mean I don't only think it's okay. I love it. It's such a good show. Number eight on my list is Sex and the City. So Sex and the City is about a woman who is a sex positive columnist. She basically <laughs> writes columns about her sexual exploits in the city of New York. So... Uh, and these columns, every episode is basically a new column that she is writing. And so it is narrated by her, following her and her friends. She has three amazing best friends and they're all very different archetypes. I am definitely more or less a Carrie Bradshaw, but I'm slowly becoming Miranda as time kind of goes on. Um, but yeah, so we have very different women who kind of lead very, very different lives. Charlotte, who is obsessed with the idea of getting married and having children. Miranda, who thinks that is the worst idea on the face of the planet because she's got a career. Samantha, who just wants to have a lot of sex 
and then there's Carrie who is kind of in between all of them not sure what she wants out of her life and uh, doesn't know if she wants to get married doesn't know if she wants to have children doesn't know if she wants the career instead or if she can have all of those things all at once but she is living her dream as a writer and in the greatest city in her opinion the greatest city in the world and living out the fashion and I just it's such a good show so very sex positive in a lot of ways a little problematic in certain ways because it was a product of its time which was the 90s uh, and so there are times in that show where they say very problematic things like how bisexuality isn't a thing that it's just uh, like a stop on the way to gay town or something like that like they they say very problematic things that are not cool at the same time it's a great show and it has helped me in many ways overcome a lot of issues in my own head about love and lust and um, a lot of other things like that and helped me become more sex positive which has helped me in many ways in my life and I just I love it it's such a good show and it's just it's just a good show I love it okay number seven on my list is actually kind of a newer addition because I only just started watching it even though we're entering season 10 11 I don't remember one of those two uh, and that is Shameless. So Shameless is about a family in South Chicago, which hits very close to home because I have family in the Chicago area, not in downtown or in the city even of Chicago, but like in the Chicago area. So I'm very familiar with Chicago. I'm very familiar with the bad parts of Chicago. Not that I've ever been there, but I hear about them all the time from my family and things like that. But also I'm only six hours away from Chicago. So it feels very close to home to me um, and it's made me really care about South Chicago and want to try one day and help do good things for the people of South Chicago because um, they deserve it. Anyway, South Chicago, if you guys don't know, is a very pover poverty ridden part of the city, very poverty ridden part of the country. It's got one of the highest crime rates in the United States. It's about a family that lives there. The father is a drunk who is in and out of the house all the time. The mother disappeared, uh, but she was also bipolar with a drug problem. And so the oldest sister, Fiona, has to take care of the family and she has to take care of her younger siblings. And so she's kind of lo lost when she should be out exploring the world in her early 20s. She's at home being basically a teen mom, essentially having had to be a teen mom and now living this life with her siblings becoming their legal guardian and all these things trying to make sure that they don't screw up their lives while at the same time trying to live her life trying not to screw up her life and trying to find out who she is and what she wants out of life and it's just it's such a great show a lot of ups and downs kind of the idea of trying to become more than what you have always known yourself to be which is i think something that everybody can relate to but especially when you come from such a poverty ridden place that you want to do better you want to make money so that you don't have to live without you can live with and it just it's such a good show and it's this really great social commentary about you know overcoming your past you know you've got lip who becomes an alcoholic like his father and you have ian who ends up with a bipolar disorder like his mother and having to realize that there's only so far you can get away from your genetics and only so far you can get away from the world that you were taught to live because of how you were raised and it's such a good show and i love it i cannot wait ian is back ian left for a little bit but ian's back and mickey is back and they are my ship and i cannot wait to see that just sail sale i want it to sale number six on my list is superstore and if you have ever worked retail and you have not seen superstore oh my god you need to watch it now turn off this video this video will be here when you get back go watch superstore it's on hulu it airs on nbc like just go watch it so superstore is not about walmart <laughs> It essentially is about Walmart uh, workers and the crazy things that happen in retail. Um, that's pretty much it. It's an ensemble cast. Matter of fact, the girl who plays uh, Cheyenne is actually a recurring character for a little while in Shameless. And when I saw her in Shameless, because I watched Superstore first, and when I watched her in Shameless, and I was like, oh my god, it's Cheyenne! And she's such a different character. Sounds completely... It's just... It's so interesting to see. It's such a great show. It's an ensemble cast. Basically just the store manager and the workers of the store and you again just have so many different archetypes of characters it's a very diverse cast which is great it's becoming more and more diverse as they continue adding new characters and things like that and i love it so very very much it's 
legitimately just one of my favorite shows. Uh, I actually cried during the first episode because I was still working retail when I first saw it. No, I wasn't. I had just stopped working retail when I first saw it and I watched the first episode and there's this moment where Amy, the one of the main main characters, like if you had to pick main characters, Amy is one of them. Um, Jonah and Amy are the two like main characters if you have to pick a main character. But Amy was telling Jonah kind of just what, why it's so hard to find beauty in every day when you work retail because retail is just so like, I mean, essentially soul sucking, but she was saying how every day is the same thing. Yes, different things happen, but like at the same time, like you put out this merchandise during this holiday, you put it away when it doesn't sell, you put out this merchandise, you put it away, you put out this merchandise, you put it away. And it's just so hard to see the beauty in the world when your life is so mundane working retail. And mind you, there are people who work retail and love it. I was not one of those people. I loved it for a long, long time. Management ruined me. But at the same time, like I really appreciated retail when I worked it. And I would never want to say that anybody who works retail is not living out their best life. They could be living out their best life and more power to you if you are. That was not the life that I wanted to live. And so when Amy said that, I started to actually cry. I paused the show and cried because it was so hard to hear that truth because it was something that I have searched for personally the reason why retail was so soul sucking for me. And it's like Amy said it. And it's funny, last one of the last times I was hanging out with my brother-in-law, we were all hanging out together and I was talking about Superstore. He's like, oh, I couldn't really get into Superstore. But he goes, but every time I've seen an episode, like every time something that has happened in, in that show, I've gone, oh my gosh, Brittany has an exactly same story, just different situations surrounding it because I never worked at Walmart. He goes, but yeah, you've, you've said basically all of those stories. I was like, yeah, those things really do happen in retail and it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's also, it's such a good show. You guys just watch it. Number five on my list is mom. Um, so mom is about, it kind of changes its, its direction at one point, but it starts out as, is, and it's essentially still the same, but just the surrounding characters are different, but it starts out as a strange, this mother who is estranged from her daughter and her daughter's estranged from her and they're both alcoholics. Um, and now the daughter is trying to be a good mother, trying to do all the things that her mother didn't do for her children, but just at the same time screwing up her children because she was also an alcoholic and just destroying their lives. And they come together at an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting um, together at one point and Bonnie, the mom and slash grandma, wants to reconcile with her daughter. And so she tries kind of hard, but also not really because she's just a messed up human being uh, to reconcile with her daughter, ends up living with her for a little while, or actually they still live together. Uh, but yeah, so it really is just about those two learning how to be family again. And it's just, it's a beautiful story about acceptance and about forgiveness, which of course are quintessential things in Alcoholics Anonymous, and I just love it. Um, it also dives into really hard truths about alcoholism, and people um, don't always make it, and that's really tough. And it's just it it deals with the draw with the drama stuff really really well, but it also makes light of certain things so that it makes it easier to survive addiction. And mind you, I understand that food addiction is very, very different. I understand that binge eating disorder is a very, very different experience than being an alcoholic or being a drug addict. But as somebody with a, with binge eating disorder, I saw almost therapy in this because a lot of the same mentalities I have about food is what people have about alcohol. And it just, it helps you get through the day sometimes. And I love it. And and it's just, it's been therapy for me and I just love that show so very, very much. And I, and I am really hoping that it continues on and it doesn't overstay its welcome because that's the worst thing that happens to a television show. <laughs> Number four on my list is Jane the Virgin. So this is the one that Priscilla Barnes was in again. She actually plays Petra's mother. And it was really funny because I was sitting there watching that, watching Jane the Virgin at one point going, why does her mother look so familiar? And then the next time I watched it, I saw the name Priscilla Barnes pop up on the like screen for like guest starring in this episode or whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, Priscilla Barnes. I wonder if it's the same person. And then I saw her again. I was like, oh my gosh, it's Terry from Three's Company. 
And yeah, so I just, I love it. It was so much fun to see her in that show. But Jane the Virgin is essentially, it's a remake of a telenovela. I don't remember where from specifically, but somewhere in obviously Latin America because it's a telenovela. But it's about Jane who has chosen to stay a virgin until she gets married. She ends up accidentally pregnant because of an accidental artificial insemination. So she becomes a pregnant virgin, which of course, being that she is Catholic, this becomes a very weird thing for her. Um, but yeah, so she ends up pregnant with her boss's child and lots of crazy antics happen throughout the course of the show if you guys have not seen it it is worth watching it just ended this last season it's such a good show you guys just please watch it it's such a good show i cannot sing its praises further it's such a good 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 show and the end just makes everything worth it everything number three on my list is red dwarf so red dwarf is a show that i have had on my list since i was a senior in high school it was my favorite show for a long time. Um, so Red Dwarf is essentially what happens if the lowest crew members on the ship survive a catastrophic event and everybody else dies and they have to survive on the ship. <laughs> That's essentially what it's about. So the second technician, uh, David Lister, gets put into a stasis pod. Uh, goes into stasis because he broke the rules and brought a cat on board who happened to be pregnant and those cats continued to breed for millions of years until they came to being a humanoid creature and the only one left on the ship was cat because he had no desire to leave and then when Lister is revived from stasis leak they revive his dead bunkmate Rimmer who actually they hate each other and it's just it's such a good show it's such a great show it's from england it's a good show it's still kind of going on they're going to do another special but it started in the 80s and <laughs> took a little break in the mid 90s came back in the 2000s came back in 2009 and it has been doing really well and i love it it's they're still just great at what they do unfortunately craig charles and chris berry actually like each other now so it's really hard to see lister and rimmer hating each other because when they actually did hate each other like the the actual like combativeness felt really real but then you could tell when they became friends because the combativeness became playful banter and it was less funny i mean, it was still funny don't get me wrong but like it was just funny in a very very different way but you could definitely tell that they became friends at one point and they're still friends and i love it i love seeing all their posts about being together and i just <sighs> that crew is my otp <laughs> That cast is my OTP. I love them. Number two on my list is The Good Place. So The Good Place is about uh, Eleanor Shellstrop who dies and gets sent to The Good Place by accident. And she spends her time trying to be a better person. And it's a great show. It's ending the season and I'm heartbroken. I don't want to see it go. I'm going to miss it so much. It's such a good show. But, uh, but essentially it's just about philosophy and ethics and which philosopher is best for you to follow and understanding that philosophy is very very different depending on who you're talking to or about and it's just it's such a good social commentary if you have not seen the good place what are you doing with your life just see it it is legitimately my favorite television show on television right now unfortunately again it is ending and i'm gonna miss the heck out of it i miss it already it's not even over but it is such a good show it'll go down in history as one of the greatest shows i just i believe it i just know it if you have not seen it Kristen Bell, Ted Danson, it introduced me to Jamila Jamil, and for that I am forever grateful. And Darcy Carden, oh my god. I have so many incredibly talented actors in that show that were no names at the start of it and are big names in my heart now, and I love them. Number one on my list is Community. Community ended a long time ago and I miss it. Um, so Community is about a community college and basically the Island Misfit Tours were picked up and put there. It starts out with Jeff Winger who lost his license to practice law because he did not have a bachelor's degree and so he has to go and get one. So he goes back to community college to get a bachelor's degree and he ends up faking a study group because he wanted to sleep with one of his classmates and he thought that that was a good way to get her into bed and he ends up accidentally creating this incredible group of friends and it's just it's so much fun watching their little antics and the way that the story is told is ridiculous it's like the stupidest show on the face of the planet but also brilliant at the same time it's so good again if you guys haven't seen it please watch it it's on hulu all of it is on hulu i love it so much 
It's such a great show. It was canceled by NBC and then brought back onto the internet and did very, very well for its sixth season. We're just waiting for that movie. Six seasons in a movie. We're going to get it one day. I know. I swear it. I, I know it in my heart. We're eventually going to get that movie, and I love it. And if it's not a paintball movie, I'm done. Dan Harmon, you better give me my paintball movie, and it better be a paintball movie, and it better be about saving Troy from those pirates. You got to pay real close attention for some of those, for some of those story story things you gotta pay real close attention to like everything around you uh but dan Harmon told a really great story in community and i love it and it's such a good show but i worry if i just like community or if i like dan Harmon. so i have not yet watched rick and morty so do not ask me in the comments below because no i have not watched rick and morty yet So there you guys have it, my top 10 favorite television shows. My camera died just as I was gonna end it. So I'm sorry if the frame changed a little bit. <laughs> I'm a professional YouTuber. Uh, not really, <laughs> not anymore. I don't get money for it anymore. Anyway, so that is it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below your guys' favorite television show of all time, whether it is current or not current. Let me know in the comments below if you are like me and have a favorite past, a favorite current. Let me know that in the comments below. Okay, I'll see you guys all next week on Monday if you guys like my Power Rangers content and the next Thursday even if you don't like my Power Rangers content because I talk about more than just Power Rangers on this channel. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye! when you forgot to turn on your microphone and film part of the video already. <laughs> oh boy, okay.